sponsored in part by DollarSeed.com for your flowers, vegetables, and herbs. All organic seeds, all only a dollar a pound. MinorTea.com, authentic haven brand, 100% natural soil condition for the home garden. Squareman Worm Farm, organic farm and gardening supply. Located in Columbus, Wisconsin. SquarewomanWormFarm.com. LittleSpringsSoap.com, handmade soap with simple, recognizable ingredients. The Rain Saucer. Visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and click on the Rain Saucer tab on the left hand side of the page. Welcome to Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. I'm Joy Baird. This is Sarah, my niece. We're going to harvest some carrots today. Ready to harvest some carrots? As you can see, we planted these carrots in a bucket with no bottom. The bucket will allow, with no bottom, it allows the water and nutrients and worms all to get up. And we've got a good stand of carrots. Yeah. You want you want the carrots? Here, let's see what we can do. So with the bottom, with the bucket having no bottom, it's real easy to just loosen it up and lift it up, and we'll see what we get here. Yeah. Now, as you can see, we buried it about eight inches in the ground. So let's see what we can do here. Here we go, Sarah. Look at that. Come here. Look what we got. Carrots. Look at this guy. That's as big as you. Yeah. What do we got here? It's like a little short stubby one. Yeah. Yeah, carrot for you. And you can see with the looseness of the soil. Oh, look at that one. That's that's a two-legger, I guess is what you should call it. Honey. Hey, look. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. Two carrots for one. So, by uh, planting them, that's a red carrot there. By planting them in the bucket, if you've got really dense soil, you can do it this way, and it really will have a good production. Oh, look, Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, look. Look at this guy. That's all twisted and gnarlyed up. Got a worm in it? Look at that. That's that's one carrot. So it's a great way to plant carrots with the bottom cut off on the bucket. We, we're using a, this is I think a 12 or 15 gallon bucket. It works quite well. We've done it multiple years with, as you can tell, very excellent results with the carrots that we've got. A couple different varieties here. Some that's double legged. So I'm really pleased with the harvest. So. You can always try different ways of planting different vegetables and a bucket with no bottom is a great way to go about doing it. So it's time to get the plastic on our cold frame. We built this a couple of months ago on the program. If you want to see how that's done, that link will be in the show notes below. We're going to get this thing planted, but first we got to get the plastic on top of it. And there was a couple of different methods that we thought of how to attach it to the top. One can be you can simply take a steeple gun and boom, 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 attach it to the top. But then we thought, well, if we do steeple it, the wind will get a hold of it and rip that plastic off the top. And then you've got a cold frame which have, with a bunch of dead plants in it. So I came up with another ideal. Now you may not have access to a wood shop, but you can go to your local home and garden center or home improvement store and you can pick up slats. Now I took on the table saw and took a two by four and cut quarter inch slats. And the reason I did that for is so when we attach the plastic to the top of the cold frame, I can take nails and I can uh, nail the plastic directly to the frame. This will detour or eliminate the possibility of wind getting a hold of this plastic and ripping everything apart. Now if we have wind that strong, we've got more issues than what we can deal with. If you just had it stapled or steepled to the top here, that plastic, you, you know, the wind can get underneath it and rip the, rip the plastic off. So these slats here are two by four. You can get uh, shingles. This is uh, red shingles we had in the wood pile. That'll work as well. So I'm just going to get this squared away on top of here and then take some oh, one and five 
eighth inch nails and nail it to it. Now if you had screws you could also feel free to screw it to the top of the piece here as well. So let me get this all squared away and we'll begin attaching our plastic. Now this is four mil plastic. You can get between four and six mil plastic based on the research you decide to do and how thick your plastic you want to be. So we went with a four mil, one because it was a little more financially uh, acceptable and uh, with the four mil you're probably just going to get about one maybe two years out of it. Now if you use this during the summer months the heat and the UV rays will break this down a lot quicker than it will in the winter. So let's get this squared away and we'll start attaching our plastic to our cold frame. from a latch there, I can't nail through the metal. Looking good, almost there. Now I'm tapping the, uh, I'm smashing that in down a little bit because I don't know if it's rumor or just myth or fairy tale, but I've been told that if you do that to the tip of your nail, the chances of breaking or cracking the board that you're nailing into greatly decreases. Now whether that's true or not, I'm willing to take the chance since I'm uh, nailing through very thin pieces of wood, but don't hold me to that. I'm just a gardener, not a craftsman. Alright, I'm getting my final piece up here. One more nail in the center. Now, because of the way we made this and we used recycled materials, it causes some gaps to be left. It causes some gaps to be left between your top piece and the 2x8s that we used. So, what we're going to do is the extra that we have back here we're going to cut off into about two and a half three inch pieces roll it up and then we're going to steeple it just with our normal household office stapler around the perimeter here kind of adding like a gasket or like a uh, like underneath your big door in your house it has like that rubber gasket there to keep the cold air out and that's essentially what we're going to be doing here now if we were all making this from brand new uh, milled material that we got from the home improvement store, this probably wouldn't be an issue. But since we're using, reducing, and recycling, this is just a, a minor adjustment we have to make. Right, so I'm taking my little piece of plastic here, eh, about every six inches or so, putting a staple in there, and again just adding a, a weather stripping, I guess is the, the uh, industrial term that's used. So I got my last piece of plastic here or weather stripping however you want. We just use household staples and that really does make a tremendous difference to the gappage that is between the top and the bottom. Now I didn't put a piece here for two reasons. One being this is a very thin piece of wood here, so I didn't want to nail into it and bust it and then lose my support. And two, I don't think we're going to need one. I think it's you know pretty, pretty well secure the way it is. So using these shims a lot better of an ideal than just to staple it to the top and have the chance of it ripping off. And we'll get this thing planted and have vegetables growing in it all winter long. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe and comment. I'm Joy Barrett and we'll see you next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. For more organic gardening and food preserving, visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.